Hey guys, this is Tech Fanatics, and in this video, we'll demonstrate the assembly of a Tech Fanatics air compressor. And not just that, we'll also show the first startup of the machine, followed by leakage test and operation. Fasten your seat belts and let's get going. When we first unbox the package, there are several things that are in the box namely, an air tank, a head unit, fan assembly, pressure cut on, cut off switch pressure gauge, NRV, air filter unit, motor pulley, a motor unit and a belt guard. Apart from these things, we will require these tools to fix these parts with the tank. We begin with installing the head unit first. It is a heavy part and we would recommend two people to lift the machine and place it over the right position on the tank. Match the bolt holes of both the head unit and the tank placement and tighten the bolt that comes with the machine. Repeat the same process with all the four bolts and tighten them with the right measurement key. Next, we'll fix the fan with the head unit. To do that, we have to first unscrew all the bolts on the fan position. And then we'll place the fan at the right position and start screwing the bolts. Once all the bolts are at the right place, tighten them with the key of the right measurement. Now we'll fix the air filter with the head unit. Just take the filter, put it on the left part of the head unit and screw it in the right direction. Next, we move on to fixing the NRV to the tank. We will first cover the NRV thread with a nylon tape to avoid any kind of leakage. First, we'll tighten it with the hands and then we'll use a wrench. When the NRV is at position, we'll connect it with the head unit using this pipe. We'll first fix the pipe with the NRV and then with the head unit. Tighten the nuts with the wrench at the right setting. Now we'll fix the pressure cut on and cut off switch. Read the thread with good nylon taping and proceed with screwing it at the right place on the tank. Once cut on cut off switch is fixed, we'll move on to the pressure gauge. Again, we'll treat the thread with a nice roll of nylon tape and then fix it while screwing it with the tank at the right position as shown. Now we'll connect the breather pipe with the NRV and the cut on cut off switch. First we'll treat the NRV and then we'll go on to the cut on cut off switch. Tighten the nuts with the right measurement key and it will be fixed. Here comes the part when we fix the motor to the motor stand. The motor stand is not a stationary stand as it needs to be adjusted according to the pulley and the belts which we'll discuss later on this video. For now, to keep the motor on its position, we'll loosely screw some bolts. Moving on, we'll now fix the pulley on the motor rotator. Align the pulley holes with the rotator in such a way that the whole shapes match. We'll use a hammer with a wooden block to completely fit the pulley on the motor. After the motor pulley is installed, we'll align it with the head pulley using a thread. We'll take a thread and while keeping it straight with the inner side of the motor pulley, we'll stretch it to the head pulley while making it straight with the inner side of the head pulley as well. If there is no bend in the thread, they are aligned. And now, we'll connect the pulleys with two rubber belts. Install the belt while beginning with the head pulley and then the motor pulley. Repeat the same process with the second belt as well. Once the belts are on, we'll tighten the loose motor bolts now to fix the motor on its position. Now 
and this pole over here is to tighten the belt. We'll screw it in the right direction while checking the tension on the belts over and over again. Now we'll open the motor plate for electrical connections. We'll perform all the connections according to a circuit drawing given on the back side of the plate. We're using high tensile strength copper wires over here. Follow the video very closely to make all the connections. We'll take the wire that we have connected to the motor and make a new connection between the motor and the cut-on cut-off switch. Follow the video closely to perform the connections. After that, we connect another free wire to the current cut cutoff switch, which will have a plug on the other end to provide power supply to the air compressor. Once all the connections are made, cover up the cut on cut off switch and the motor connection board with the cover plate. In the end, we'll fix the belt guard at the back of the machine. Match the holes of the belt guard to the machine holes and fix it with some nuts and bolts. Over here, we'll install a safety wall. We'll screw it on the left side of the tank opening. We're gonna use hands first and then we'll move on to the wrench at the right setting to tighten it. Now we'll open the oil cap and fix an oil funnel. Then we'll pour 20W40 engine oil through the funnel and we'll keep a check on the oil gauge till it reaches 80% occupancy. Once it's filled sufficiently, we'll unscrew the funnel and cover the opening with the oil cap once again. This is the part where we turn the machine on for the very first time. Connect the power plug to a power socket and pull the cut on cut off switch. In the first startup, the machine will fill up with air till it reaches 120 bars of pressure. 
Once the gauge shows the right readings, we'll turn it off by pressing the current on off switch. Now we'll move on to check for air leakages on all the joints made with the tank. We will apply soap solution on all the joints with the brush and look for air bubbles. If a joint shows air bubbles with the soap solution, it shows that it has leakages. We will take a note of all the leakage joints. Once we have taken the note, we will move on to fixing the leakage points. To fix a leakage point, we will unscrew that part of the machine. And we are going to put some more nylon tape on it to fix it back. Once that's done, fix that same part with the air tank. and repeat the same process for all the leakage points. If all the leakage points have been treated, again check all the joints with the soap solution. If there are no air bubbles anymore, we have successfully treated all the leakage points. The last fixing part is the hose pipe to the air outlet. To fix the hose pipe, we'll first screw a barrel nipple to the air outlet. We'll use a pipe wrench to tightly fix it. And then we'll fix the hose pipe to the other end of the barrel nipple. The hose pipe holds an air gun to fill air in the tire on the other end. Now this over here is a demonstration of a tire being filled using a Tech Fanatics air compressor. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. This is Tech Fanatics. See you guys in the next one.